If it's too late to worry and you're too blue to cry, then get ready for Dr. Lori Roth. She's a Ph.D., black belt, host, singer, songwriter, mom, gun owner, survivor, and red-blooded American through and through. From 3,000 feet up in the mountains of Washington, it's the Annie Oakley of the airwaves. Ready or not, here she comes, Dr. Lori Roth. Welcome to this hour of the show, folks. We're going to talk about several things that are in our face right now that the mainstream media continues to ignore. Kind of a form of mental illness, if you think about it. I mean, it's really quite sad. Uh, the sellout from well before Obama was elected, they knew all they needed to know. They looked the other way. And they continue to, although the American people have awakened. This is not the change many people signed up for. And as I asked Attorney Steve Eichler last hour, I said, are, are we still a republic? And he said, no, we're, we're, uh, we've lost that. We're, we're uh, compromised. We're a severely assaulted republic, for sure. There's a lot that needs to be done to house clean. I asked Carl Gallup to join us. He's a talk show host. He's a pastor. He's a patriot. He's a say-it-like-it-is guy. He does videos that go viral and cause lots of trouble. I'm surprised he hasn't been taken off to a... Um, FEMA camp for retraining somewhere, probably. Well, why did I give the government any ideas? What am I, on drugs or something? Well, I've already got black helicopters flying over my house anyway. Well, you already got black hel- <laughs> See, look at you with your bad self. I mean, that's just how you are. Uh, just like all of us. Carl, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing great, Lori. And listen, you, God bless you. Thanks for having me. It's not that I'm so courageous. It's just that <laughs> I love our constitutional republic, and I thank God for it, and I want to preserve it. And I agree with your last guest. We are a compromised. We have been assaulted. We have been <laughs> molested. And uh, we, we, we need some healing, and we need some regrouping. And uh, and I just I love it enough to speak up and to speak out, and I don't care what the consequences are. I want it back. Um, we have to get it back. We have to be a light on the hill. I believe that's God's plan. I don't, I've been praying for mercy for some time, and you know I'm running as an outsider for president. I'm trying to get the nomination of the Constitution Party. I'm having to fight for it. There's a lot of people that want it. But I, you know, hey, it, it's a path. It's an opportunity. And then I'm trusting that the people and various alternative media will get behind me. When you look at what looks to be, GOP selection of Romney, Mr. Compromise, Mr. Pro-Abortion, Mr. Pro-Gay Marriage, Mr. Romney Care that inspired Obamacare, Mr. Pro-NDAA Bill that is an egregious assault on our freedoms. That is the Republicans' answer? Is that nightmare? Uh, uh, Pairing him against the other wing of the socialist, communist, fascist bird? Um, uh, Obama, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I can I can paint a scenario even a little worse than what you just said, describing Romney, because I don't think he is pro-abortion. I don't think he is pro-gay marriage. I think he vehemently opposes it because of his Mormon faith. But what's more egregious than what you just described is that he was willing to sell out and present himself as pro-abortion and pro-gay marriage so that he could obtain a position of power. Yeah, Lori, I can't even imagine... I'm anti-gay marriage and anti-abortion. There is no circumstance in this world where I would present myself as pro-gay marriage and pro-abortion simply to gain a position of power. I would not do it. And so, again, I don't think he's pro-abortion or pro-gay marriage in his heart. He's a he's a practicing Mormon, for goodness sakes. But the fact that he would sell out those uh, positions of morality so that he could uh, run for office is just unthinkable to me. It's, that's, a, that's a scary dude. Well, it is. And, and uh, it's not in the bag totally yet, but it looks like Romney. And then shamefully, uh, Mr. Santorum that's tried to act all John Wayne against Romney and act like he's the moral high ground, and oh, oh, Romney's so bad and immoral and this and that and all the things, now he's saying he'd be his VP. So Mr. He, Mr. John Wayne is a sellout himself. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, this, it's this lack of character, this lack of moral fiber that runs through our nation at all levels. Uh, thankfully, and, and thank God, there are still some great men of character out there and great women of character out there. Look, We'll be right back with Carl Gallops and dive into the issues. I'm Lori Roth. No, this is not American Idol, so keep your shirt on and keep your powder dry. Dr. Lori Roth will be back in just mere moments. The name.
name is Dr. Lori Roth, and here she is again right now. I'm talking with Carl Gallup. So, uh, a lot of people who are familiarizing themselves with you don't realize that you have an extensive law enforcement background. So you approach the news as a patriot. You you're you have a pastor's hat. You have a talk show host hat. But you have a law enforcement hat, which is very, very interesting combo plate. Well, it is, Lori, and I think it gives me a u- unique perspective. I had uh, uh, almost 10 years of Florida law enforcement, uh, the majority of that with two different sheriff's offices in Florida, and part of that uh, doing my own criminal investigation. So it, it does give me a lot of insight into, like the, the, the Trayvon Martin case, uh, like the uh, – uh, Arpaio investigation, uh, like the constitutional issues of uh, of the Obama uh, uh, regime, etc. So, yeah, I think it gives me a unique perspective. Well, it does. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, there's two or three things you and I talked about before the show that are in our face cases. One of them is Sheriff Arpaio. Now, he did a six-month investigation with real law enforcement people. It was a big press conference. And, of course, shock of all shocks, mainstream media just kind of looked the other way. Now, this isn't just a person with an opinion or a commentator. This is a law enforcement official with a bunch of law enforcement officials that did a real investigation that confirmed that the birth certificate was a forgery, which we knew within 24 hours, but he confirmed it from a law position. And you would think... That would mean immediate impeachment of papers. It would mean some response from Congress. I, it, this drives me insane. I, 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 I'm sorry. Is there anyone awake? Are they all in some delirium sort of coma in Congress? Well, you know what, Laurie? Uh, I, I can tell you why all of this is going on. Um, first of all, based on my law enforcement experience, based upon logic and common sense, and I'll give you some scenarios, but also based upon some inside insight that I have, uh, people who are actually involved in the investigation I have uh, now become uh, um, uh, affiliated with, as well as some folks within the Washington Loop, news media loop, uh, that uh, are feeding me information. So it's very complex and it's multifaceted, but I can sh- certainly give you some insight as to why this, loony, this, this lunacy is, is occurring right before your eyes. What, 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 what are some of those things? I mean, well, I'd like all just, the help me, I can get. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Well, me too. And that's what caused me to throw myself into it because I, I thought I was going crazy too. But, but it, it, it makes sense to me now that I've uh, thought about it, examined it, and then talked to people who know what's happening. Uh, let, let, me ju- let me just remind you before I get into this, um, uh, uh, Colonel Paul, uh, excuse me, G- Major General Paul Vallele, one year ago, went on record on talk radio, and, and, and his, his talk radio interview is on YouTube. It's all over YouTube, so it's, this is not just something I'm pulling out of the air. And Major General Paul Vallele announced on talk radio that he knew for a fact that the FBI knows for a fact that Obama's records are forged and that he is a fake and that Congress knows for a fact but they are not doing anything about it until he gets out of office because they are afraid of, quote, and this is Paul Vallelay's statement, black backlash across America. You see what's happening with the Trayvon Martin case. Can you imagine if Congress or the Supreme Court or the news media, quote, brought down America's first black president who's adored and revered around the world? Can you imagine? Congress is terrified. The courts are terrified. The FBI it's, it's an amazing thing, Lori, and I can prove to you that Arpaio's investigation is 100% dead on. You want okay. me to do that? Please, just walk it's, us it, through. It's, it's simple logic. Think of this, Dr. Lori. You and I own a major newspaper. I mean, we own the New York Times. And let's just say that we're in the tank for Obama. And all of a sudden, this guy with 30 years of federal law enforcement experience, who was the director in the state of Arizona or either New Mexico, I can't remember, for the DEA for years, then is a five-time elected sheriff 
puts together a six-member investigative team of three attorneys, three criminal investigators. They take six months. They farm the information out to forensics laboratories and digital document experts. Two of the people who were on that team were avowed Obama supporters on record stating that they thought the documents would all prove to be correct. That's why they were on the team. This thing comes back six months later, 100% conclusive, according to their words, that the document is a forgery, which means high crimes and felonies have been committed from the Oval Office on down. You and I own the Washington Times. Now, I mean, excuse me, we own the New York Times. Now, if we're in the tank for Obama and we think our pio is a fruitcake and we think his investigation is a fruitcake, we're going to investigate his investigation and expose him for the fraud that we think he is. We're going to bring down the sheriff. We're going to win the Pulitzer Prize for the story of the decade. On the other hand, if we have any kind of fair and balance to us at all, and we think in the investigation we discover that our pile's investigation is dead on, then we support the sheriff, we bring down the president, and we report the story of the century – maybe in American history, and win the Pulitzer Prize. But yeah. the fact that nothing is being done is 100% indicative that the mainstream media knows that Arpaio's investigation is dead on, and they don't touch it out of fear or they don't touch it because they're in the tank for Obama. Think about it logically, Dr. Lorry. If they thought that that investigation was fraudulent, they would be nailing Arpaio to the oh, wall. Oh, they would for be all to torturing see. him. Sure. They can't. But, it, but it, they can't. No. Because, see, see, Arpaio didn't investigate anything, Dr. Lori. He mm -hmm. didn't investigate anything. Mm -hmm. He put together a team, washed his hands of it, walked away, and went about his job as sheriff. And he said to the team, two of them who were pro Obama people, he said, report back to me in six months from now. When they came back, they said, oh, my gosh, we've got a president that's a fake. And the two Obama people said, we are now birthers. I mean, and the, and the media knows this, Dr. Lori. Okay, General Paul I, Vallely says the FBI knows it. it is, the, uh, is the main fear that Paul Vallely and the FBI and, and these sources saying is their main fear, the primary fear, they're terrified of a race war because if they dare point out the truth, they couldn't possibly imagine taking out of office the first black president. Why are they all stuck on the color, the color, the color? I mean, who cares what color he is? He's a scumbag. He's our a nation, crook. Yeah. Our nation has been uh, 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 groomed for this atmosphere for the last several decades, this political correctness. I said several decades ago from my pulpit, and then a decade ago, once I started on talk radio, I have proclaimed it loudly and clearly that political correctness would be the destruction of our nation. And people laughed at me when I said it because they thought, oh, no, no, you just got to get with it, man, you know. And, 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 and they couldn't understand my logic. And as you can tell, I'm a very logical person because, I, you know, with criminal investigation yeah. experience, I mean, you have to be a logical, thinking, scientific person. Yeah. But they couldn't understand that my logic was, look, if we're going to go down this slippery slope – then before long, the entire nation can be manipulated by fear of being politically incorrect. I said that 10 years ago, Lori. People laughed at me. Well, we are seeing uh, the impossible. I mean, our framers and founders must be turning over in their graves. Oh, they didn't even imagine anything I like can't this. even imagine. I mean, yeah. who would have thought? I mean... Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton were nightmares of the left, but they were good talk show material. But it wasn't this. You this know is what? a worldview class. Dr. Lloyd, you know, when you long for the days of Bill Clinton, oh, please. That, you, you know you're in bad shape. Give me Monica and Bill again, please, I, mean, I, I yeah, beg you. I wake you. up thinking, please, please, put Bill back in the office. Uh, let him have Monica. Uh, just give us Bill and Hillary, please. I mean, you know, when you get to that point, you know you're in bad shape. <laughs> well, we, we, we certainly are. I, I'm just concerned that... You know, where are the impeachment papers when the NDAA bill was signed into law that violates posse comitatus and our Miranda rights that could whisk us off? I mean, why is that not we're, impeachable? 
Well, where was the impeachment when he went to war with Libya, when he Thank and Clinton you. and Hillary and Biden all three said that if George Bush did something similar back when they were senators, that they would personally begin impeachment proceedings, that it was clearly a violation of the Constitution. Then all three of these senators get in office, appoint one of them as Caesar, and the next thing you know, you have senators and a Caesar running the nation, and all of a sudden, everything's legal for them. We have to, and I've said it to my audience many times, we, there is power in prayer, yep. pra- humble prayer before God. And he says in Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will they hear from heaven and then will I heal their land. That, you can't get more clear than that. God tells us what we need to do. He will listen to the prayer of people. He founded this nation. He developed it. He made it the number one nation in the world in power and might and inventiveness and exceptionalism. And we have just drifted, drifted down the po- toilet bowl. And now we've gotten what we deserved. If not, we're, we're judged by our own. We, we wanted Saul. We got Saul. I know. Well, the Lord may be through with us. And, and I hate to sound so pessimistic. I pray not, and I hope not. I know that before he was through with Sodom and Gomorrah, he went to Abraham and told Abraham what he was going to do. And Abraham intervened and said, if, Lord, if there's just ten righteous people, would you spare it? And the Lord said, yes, I would spare it because of your prayers for ten righteous people. Now, the shame was that Sodom and Gomorrah in Abraham's day didn't even have ten righteous people. And, uh, but, but, but we do. There are still a lot of righteous, godly, oh, yes. God-fearing people in our country. Even some in the government, Lori. They're just, they're just yeah. afraid. These are frightening political people, and spiritual times. People need you're, – you're right. I think that there's tens upon tens of thousands of people who love the Lord, who love God, who love yeah. freedom and our Constitution, that are praying for their country. Yes. And I believe in my heart – I for some reason, over a year ago, uh, when I felt led by God to do this – ridiculous thing as an outsider uh, looking like fringe with no money and no political background and no lawyer i mean i I knew how i would look and god still pulled me forward and he said are you willing to obey are you willing to do this and trust me yeah and i said okay okay well i knew i knew going forward uh what i was facing that i'd be taking on the forces of hell as a total outsider including my Republican friends and the normal friends and the conservative friends, what are you on, drugs? You don't have any money. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you, do you know how many times I've had that conversation? But every time the Lord has said, Lori, read the story of Gideon again. Right. Read the story of Gideon again. Right. My ways are not man's ways. That's right. I will do. And see, I feel like. Well, you this can read is not a normal Moses, time. You can read the story of Deborah. You can read the story of Gideon. You can read the story of David and Goliath. And, and that's you. <laughs> Well, uh, the bottom line is God uses people that will listen to him. That's right. And for some reason, for some reason, as Dr. Manning uh, from Otlaw, New York, went in prayer about it, but he, he, he uh, said that the Lord revealed to him that I was the anointed one running and, and not, not the GOP. He said the, the Lord has left the GOP, and he said you are his, his anointed choice for the office of the president. And I, I have reminded that. I said, Lord. You know the plan. You know the media needed to, and the the ballot access needed, and so I am in faith, with very little money. I've never lied about. It. I don't. I'm not a poser. I'm not a soundbite person. I I need contributions. I need donations at LoriRaw2012.com. I do. I I need to ha- have my way to Nashville to the national convention paid. I've got enough for airfare, but not enough for their hotel. I don't have lots of money. I've been recovering for years from a half a million dollar near fatal motorcycle wreck. We didn't have health insurance. It nearly destroyed my family. It nearly destroyed us. And that's what I'm coming back from. But that's what I feel America is coming back from. I was roadkill. I was two minutes from death. That is exactly how America looks right Right, now. Right, right. And you and I both believe, unless God intervenes and tells us otherwise, that America can come back 
with the proper kind of godly, character-driven leadership, people who are passionate about our constitutional republic and the rule of law, about honesty, integrity, and decency, and fairness. And, and people like you and I, and there are many thousands of others yeah. out there like us, and hopefully millions, uh, we can, with God's help, uh, bring this nation back from roadkill. Hold can. that thought. Hold that thought. We'll be right back with Carl Gallup. I'm Lori Ross. No, this is not American Idol. So keep your shirt on and keep your powder dry. Dr. Lori Roth will be back in just mere moments. Her name is Dr. Lori Roth, and here she is again, right now. We're talking with uh, investigative journalist, really, talk show host, pastor, uh, former uh, law enforcement officer, uh, Carl Gallup. He's just a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and you have a warped sense of humor, too, so you really are twisted like me. Um, Carl, you were talking about some of your observation on the Arpaio press conference. So, indeed, your analysis of that, as mine is, I mean, that's 100% dead on. I mean, he did indeed prove that the uh, the presented birth certificate was fraudulent. Now, he's trying to find the source of that in Hawaii or the White House still. I yep. mean, this investigation still continues to have legs, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes. In fact, my sources tell me, and, and some of this has even made it into the media, like the headlines of WND.com and, and on the P.P. Simmons channel, et cetera. But my sources that are involved in that tell me that there are many more avenues that Arpaio is now following uh, because, and, and again, I've done this. I, I know what happened to him. He goes down one road investigating one thing, but because it, there is a crime there, then he, in the process of that, uncovers uh, unknowingly beforehand, but now in the midst of it, he uncovers several more potential crimes. So not only has he announced, and my inside sources are telling me that very soon, I guess within a few months at the most, he will be making arrests in the uh, birth certificate case, but in the meantime, they're, they're up to their eyeballs in further investigative leads in this case. So this is not over, uh, Lori. Something's going to snap soon, and I think it's going to snap to the point that the media just will not be able to uh, cover it up or ignore it. Well, I the mean, question you start arresting is, people in the White House, how are you going to cover that up? Well, the question is, is fear of rejection or fear of race war going to create all kinds of layering of lies that continue on. We've seen nothing but lies and cover-up. Um, it makes Nixon look like a choir boy, all this rubbish. Well, but uh, I'm, I'm also concerned, okay, will this cover-up be traced all the way to Obama, or will he have a, a – have he, will he have already prepared a big shell around him? Well, yes and no to all of that. Here's what I mean. Yes, the mainstream media, apparently, most of them in the tank, they're either in the tank or they're terrified, okay? Yeah. So that's the categories they're in. And, and for example, Fox News, I don't think they're in the tank for Obama, but I think that they're terrified. Uh, with with the with the fallout of bringing down the first black president with 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 criminal charges criminal charges, but I think that people like you people like me uh, places like WND.com and Drudge and Breitbart and Freedom Friday my show and your show Dr. Lloyd Roth and and others I, I, the internet emails uh, uh, Twitter uh, Facebook uh, this is something that the mainstream media is having a hard time competing with and as a matter of fact in many avenues they're losing the competition so that's why I'm so positive about this that we've got to keep digging for the truth keep getting the truth and keep publicizing the truth because millions will hear it. listen a Wenzel poll was done just a few days ago WND.com commissioned them and Wenzel is right up there with Gallup and, and, and the others in, in their accuracy with a plus or minus of a three-point uh, margin of error. They reported that a full 140 million Americans, that's 40 percent of our nation, now believes that Obama is unconstitutionally ineligible. 140 million Americans Lori, and, and that's because of Arpaio's investigation and people like you and me and WND and Drudge and others doing what we're doing. Yeah. So, as I said, something's going to snap 
soon, uh, mainstream media or not, when Arpaio starts making arrests in and around the White House, when he starts giving hour-and-a-half news conferences on many other crimes that have been committed that he can prove, uh, something's going to snap. Unbelievable. Uh, there, there's another case. So we'll watch, keep our eye on this ball and, and see if it means a hill of beans to the media. See, then I'm wondering, will the media then not just cover up because of fear or, or threats from Obama or his regime, but will they cover up because of their lack of leadership and lack of integrity, and well, now they've been caught with their pants down? Well, both. But there's something else I wanted to address. You asked a brilliant question a few seconds ago, and I, and I forgot to answer it, and that is, you said what's going to happen when it goes all the way up to Obama's office? Is he going to have a shell built around him? Well, of course they're going to try to insulate him and protect him, but here's the bottom line. If Here's the bottom line, Lori. Now, please hear me closely as a yeah. former investigator. Obama became a player the day he stood in front of the world on television and dangled that document in front of everybody's face and said, this is my birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Now, hear me. If he was not born in America, and we discover, because right now we don't know, because the birth certificate he gave is a forgery. So yeah. that's, that's no good. No other state will claim that he was born with them. Hawaii's the only one that does, but they won't let anybody at the records yet. And the one they did produce is a forgery, so it's looking like, Lori, that he wasn't born in America. Yeah. So they can insulate him all he wants, but when he stood in front of the camera and dangled that certificate... He became a player, and the legal term is a co-conspirator in a felony and a federal crime. We've got him on video claiming that that's his birth certificate. So they can insulate him all he wants. If they can prove that he has no American birth certificate, then Obama has convicted himself in front of the world on television. So he can't claim... Uh, well, I didn't know it was a fraud. I thought it was real. I was given it. So he, he can blame someone else. The only way he could do that is if they do produce a legitimate birth certificate where he was born some, in Hawaii, and then and then and, and and if we can find that out that he truly was born in Hawaii and it's proved beyond a shadow of a doubt, then yes, there's the outside possibility he could say, "Well, hey, I just asked for my Hawaii birth certificate. I'm the president. I assigned that to underlings. Somebody tried to sabotage me. Somebody gave me a forgery and, and put in my hand. But, I thought it was my real one. But I there's no my real way. Birth certificate in my hand. There's no way in heaven or hell that he can claim ignorance if they find out that he indeed was born in Kenya. Well, that's right. That's what I'm saying. If He if can't ha discover... be confused. Oh, I thought I was born in Hawaii. That's no, crap. No, no, there's no way. This is what I'm saying. He became a player. The stupidest thing he did, if he was not born in the United States, was to go in front of the cameras and hold that piece of paper up and say, this is mine. Because if, he, if we can prove that he was born in America, then he can claim that, hey, somebody hoodwinked me. I knew I was born in Hawaii. I asked for my certificate. I thought that's what I was holding up. I'm the president. I didn't go down to Hawaii and get my certificate. I had my aides do that. Yeah. But, 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 Lori, if he's not born in Hawaii, as that birth certificate he held up says, then he is a convicted man by his own appearance on television. And what kind of federal crime would that be? What level? In your well, view. I would think, and I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but I would think it would be treasonous because here's what it means. It means a foreign national purposely usurped the office of commander-in-chief of the number one military in the world through fraud, forgery, and deception. It would be like if Obama, Osama bin Laden had a facelift and plastic surgery and ran himself as president with all manner of deceit and won the office and took our military and started using it against us, would that not be treasonous? 100%. Okay, well, there's a similar scenario. If he was not born here, and he knows he was not born here, and all of his people know he was not born here, but he forged and frauded and de defrauded and deceived his way, deceived his way into the office with all manner of cover-up around him, trashing the American people, trashing the American Constitution, trashing Congress, using our military for the Arab Spring and the overthrowing of Arab nations, trashing Israel, and he was a foreign national invader to the White House? What do you mean what kind of crime is there? Well, 
Well, <laughs> well, I guess. I mean, that's treason. <laughs> when you look at it, the tradition, one president comes in and another one goes out, and they always pardon the previous president. I mean, yeah. when they sign the first papers. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem appropriate in this well, case. Well, no, that would be the death nail. I mean, if if, if you win the presidency, excuse me, when you win the presidency, yeah. and if you were to go in and let's say you just had a change of heart, says, you know, I'm going to uh, uh, pardon him. Well, th- th- you'd be a one-term president. <laughs> well, there, there's no there's no reason to pardon him if if there's right. been uh, by that time proof That's that right. he's fraudulent. I mean, he's a criminal. That's right. I'm sorry and, he and, has cute little kids, and I'm sorry he has a cute wife. I'm sorry he has a family. Well, no one wants to hurt him, but he's a thug. Well, well, and here's the thing, Dr. Laurie. I want your audience to understand. At this point, I'm not accusing him of being a foreign invader in the White House. You asked me a hypothetical question, and I gave you a hypothetical answer. The worst case yeah. scenario is that he could be a foreign invader to the White House. But here's what we know. According to a criminal investigation, so I'm going to call it fact because the sheriff and six investigators, two of whom are Obama supporters, said it's a fact. So here's what we know as fact. The birth certificate he presented is a forgery. It's a fake. So there's only a couple of possibilities. That is, a real one exists and somebody played a horrible trick on him. Okay, that's easy enough to solve. Give us the real one. Give us the microfiche. The only other possibility is there is no real one, and he knows it. Now, that is the worst-case scenario. So, so those are the only possibilities we have, Dr. Lloyd. That's it. This is ugly. And, and you haven't even touched on the constitutional emergency of him signing so many unconstitutional, horrific laws into existence that well, have uh, shredded uh, the, the health care law, the NDAA, uh, the, the executive orders to uh, have more martial law uh, privileges, signing the aviation bill to have yeah. 30,000 drones flying. Everything he signed well, would be null and void. What, what, what about his refusal? What about his refusal to enforce the Defense of Marriage Act, which is federal law? Yeah. I mean, that's unconstitutional. That's impeachable. I mean, that's, can you imagine a Republican president going off and say, okay, here's all these federal laws on abortion where you can, you can have an abortion. I'm not going to uh, follow those anymore. I'm just going to outlaw abortion. I don't care what the law says. Can you imagine? No. We'll be right back with Carl Gallup. I'm Lori Roth. No, this is not American Idol. So keep your shirt on and keep your powder dry. Dr. Lori Roth will be back in just mere moments. name is Dr. Lori Roth, and here she is again, right now. We're talking with Carl Gallups about all the crazy headlines that are going on. Uh, there was another one that involved all kinds of piles of racism. Talk to us a little bit about that case. Uh, you're talking about the uh, Trayvon Martin case yeah. down, down in T- Florida, where I am? <laughs> Tell the folks about that that don't even know about it. Well, well, just uh, first of all, I don't know how they couldn't know about it <laughs> because it's the headlines of everything. Yeah. And, oh, gosh, there's some political nefariousness going on with this. This just stinks to high heaven, and we don't even have time to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, but, but the bottom line is... A uh, black teenager, 17 years old, Trayvon Martin, was shot and killed by a gentleman by the name of, or a man by the name of George Zimmerman. Um, uh, horrible tragedy. Anytime anybody is killed, especially a teenager, and look, I don't care if the guy was in the process of robbing a bank and everybody saw him, it, it, you know, if he dies in that process, I mean, I'm pro law enforcement, but still a 17 year old kid dying is, is a, just a tragedy. He's somebody's son. And somebody loves him. And so the bottom line is we've got a tragedy now. But to pile tragedy on top of tragedy, the race prostitutes, the race pimps, uh, Jackson and uh, uh, Al Sharpton and uh, uh, Louis Farrakhan and, and even Obama made himself a race pimp in this case. Is that hold, the music? Hold, hold, yeah, hold that thought okay. on the other side. I want to hear about this. No, this is not American Idol. So keep your shirt on and keep your powder dry. Dr. Laurie Roth will be back in just mere moments. Her name is Dr. Laurie Roth. Here she is again, right now. Carl, we have two or three minutes. Uh, 
share with the folks the facts of this Zimmerman case. It's unbelievable. It's yeah, turned into well, a it race is. war. And the bottom line is this, and very, very quickly, there's so much more to it than what I have time for. But as it turns out, uh, the, the race pimps jumped all over it. Obama jumps all over it on the national media and says, oh, this boy, if I had a boy, he'd look just like this. Well, what, what, what does that mean? Because the boy's black? I mean, that's unbelievable. I can't imagine George Bush saying something similar if a white kid was killed by a black guy getting on TV and saying, oh, this could be my son. Look, he looks just like me. I mean, that's horrible. But in the meantime, this whole thing was painted by the media as this white supremacist, uh, uh, conservative, uh, gun-toting uh, con- uh, thug who kills this innocent black kid. But now the facts are coming out, and George Zimmer- Zimmer- Zimmerman, the killer, He's Hispanic. His mother is Hispanic. His dad is white, so he's half Hispanic, half white. Um, Also, he's a registered Democrat and a very loyal Democrat. (laughs) So he's not a conservative white racist. He's a Democrat. And now what we're finding out is is that there's a distinct possibility that Zimmerman was defending himself from an attack by Trayvon Martin and shot in legal self-defense, which is what the cops had a, had initially determined at the crime scene. But in the meantime, all the race pimps are out there stirring up a race war over something that might turn out to be the opposite of how the media has painted it. And uh, that's huge in the news right now. Unbelievable. And Obama's weighed in, and everyone's just uh, pimping this and make sure that they can try to distract from Sheriff Pyle's yeah. investigation. Oh, yeah. oh, oh it's yeah. classic, isn't it? I think it's it? a big distraction ploy. I think it's a part of his political correctness. I think it's a part of invoking fear in the heart of Americans, and particularly white Americans, for us not to say anything negative against any uh, black attack. And, you know, that's such a shame because I don't have a racist bone in my body. I don't care if the president's black or white or female or male. I want a godly, constitutional person in the office. Amen. Well, uh, we have a minute or two left. Tell the folks about your website, where they can listen to and see your cool videos that go wild. Well, the easiest thing to do is go to carlgallops.com. From there, you can find out everything about me, all the links to YouTube, P.P. Simmons, all my videos, my ministry, uh, my website. Plus, I've got a book coming out by WND Books uh, in May, just a few weeks from now. That's going to be huge. It's called The Magic Man in the Sky, Effectively Defending the Christian Faith. That's going to go worldwide. Uh, they can find out everything about me at carlgallops.com. They can listen to my radio program from there. They can see my radio program website, everything, carlgallops.com. Well, you are have an amazing vision. Do you think we're going to get our country back in November, or do you think God is in judgment? I, I'm praying for mercy. See, I don't have a feel for it that I can make a declaration of what is going to happen, but all I know is God has put a passion and an unction in my heart to speak what I'm speaking, to speak the truth. All I'm dealing in is facts, and anything I say that is proven false, I will correct it. I will go on the air and correct it. I just want truth to prevail. I want our constitutional republic back. I want to be able to look at my grandchildren in the eyes in the days to come and say, your papa did everything he could to preserve your nation. And I don't know what's going to happen in November. That's in the hands of God, but I'm working hard. Amen. I I, I want Lori Roth to be in office. Well, pray for that, and let's let's (laughs) get that to happen if it's the Lord's will. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks for listening in, folks. You know by now that God, country, and our moral heritage are not for sale. And our great country needs your fervent prayers. Talk to your friends. Talk to your enemies. Spread the word about the Roth Show. Check out Lori's articles, archives, and great sponsors. Go to therothshow.com. Remember to pray for our country. And remember to be back next time right here for The Roth Show with Dr. Lori Roth.